Hi, I'm Eric Poulin. And I'm Robin Poulin. We're the co-founders of Calendar Budget, and welcome to the Calendar Budget Podcast. I can pay cash, I can pay check, I can pay wire transfer, I can pay gift card, I can pay credit, I can pay anything you like. I can pay cash, I can pay check, I can pay wire transfer, I can pay gift card, I can pay credit, I can pay anything you like. Okay, we are back. Today we're going to be talking a little more tactical compared to some of the previous podcasts we've been doing where we're talking about strategies and kind of the more education of budgeting. We want to talk a little bit more today about how to actually implement a budget. I'm talking about categories, so budget categories. So when we talk about budget categories, what is what does that mean to you? It's an area that you're going to spend money on. So like your food, your clothes, housing, different things like that, your car, just specific areas that you would make a collection of expenses on. Yeah, or exactly. Income. <clears throat> the point is with, you know, as human beings, it makes sense for us to group things together. We just tend to think about things in groups. It's a lot easier to do that. We've got all these expenses that happen. You know, if you look at your last bank statement or credit card statement, Mm -hmm. it's going to have hundreds of items on it probably. And if you're trying to just look at them all, it's just overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So putting things into groups just makes a lot more sense. Um, And so what are some of the advantages of grouping these things together? We call them these groups are we're referring to them as categories, mm-hmm. but what are some of the advantages of categorizing your expenses and income? And well, some of the things that happens when you set a category, you can discover how much you really spend on something. So maybe it's a hobby or a habit, or maybe it's just eating out all the time. How much are you really spending on that? Yeah. And it can really wake you up. If you happen to get that morning breakfast every morning on your way to work, how much is that adding up to? Probably a lot more than you're expecting. Yeah, that morning stop at Starbucks, when you look at it over the course of a month and you combine that maybe with other fast food outings, Mm -hmm. suddenly you're like, holy cow, I spent $250 on fast food in a month. It can be ridiculous. Um, And it can sometimes fly under the radar if you're not tracking it or looking at it in these grouped ways. Yeah. Plus, when you group things together, it allows you to set a specific budget against that individual category. So, for example, if we just take that one we just did, fast food, and we kind of group, you know, the morning drink at Starbucks or, or you know, the stop on the way home for a snack. And lunch out. Yeah, all that you group under fast food. Maybe not lunch. Maybe lunch is not fast food. Or even just because you're at work and you didn't have time to make lunch, so you're going to go and buy something from a cafeteria or wherever. We we actually just do it as eating out. So we have a category called restaurants, and all the things we just mentioned would fall under that category. If you don't bring it from home, it's a restaurant. Unless somebody gives it to you. So if you um, have this category for restaurants, and you can set a budget against that and say, look, in a month, I only want to spend... $80 $80 on restaurants. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's unreasonably low for you. Maybe it's unreasonably high for you. Everybody's going to be a little different. Exactly. But that's the point of this exercise is to figure out what works for you. So with that kind of setting the stage about grouping things by category, and the plan is to set budgets against the category, how do we get started? What are, what are some ways that we could get started? I guess there's several types of categories that we mm-hmm. can think about. Yes. Um, what, what would you say would be a good way to start? First, you need to identify even parts of each of the categories. They'll have some fixed expenses and some variable expenses. So maybe you have like a housing category. You need to pay rent or mortgage. Definitely, that has to happen. Is that fixed or variable? Those would be fixed expenses. So what's the difference between a fixed and a variable? I think we've talked about this before, but just so that we're all on the same page. Right. Of course. So fixed expenses, they are expenses that have to happen, that come every month, the same every month. But then you have your variable expenses that would change every month. Yeah. So the, And I would say, just to add to that, they're fixed in the fact that they're the same amount every month and they're dependable at probably the same time every month. Mm-hmm. Same time, same amount every month. They're just kind of fixed like you could have 
could put it on your calendar and it's not going to change. Yeah. Whereas variable, you said they change. So what's some, some example of, uh, of a variable expense so that everybody's on the same page here? So your heating and your hy uh, hydro, your uh, water, that goes up and down depending on how much you use. So that would change. But that does yeah. typically to come out on the same date, except for like Maybe. weekends or something like that usually. So something like food would be a little even more variable. Definitely. Depends how much you consume. You might do groceries on a different day. Um, it, like eating out is a great example of a variable expense because it's not a need. It's usually a want. Sometimes yeah. it's a need, but it's like it's not going to be dependably the same every month. Yeah. So that's a variable expense. If we think about, like you just said, fixed expenses and variable expenses, those are great ways to kind of start by figuring it out. The fixed ones should be easy because they're going to be the same every month and you probably yeah. already know what these are you can see them in your statement that you were talking about you exactly. just go back and look and you can see just the repetition of what's happening all the time yeah even some of those things might look like repetition but you can see that the costs typically go up and down that tend to happen often it might not even be the individual transactions that are variable when we consider all of the individual transactions that make up our life then when we start grouping those, we may find the individual transactions are more or less fixed, but mm -hmm. maybe the category is still variable. Mm -hmm. For eating out, for example, maybe every time you go to that Starbucks, you get the same drink, it's the mm -hmm. same amount, but maybe you go a variable number of times during the month. So that would still make it a variable category. Um, good ways to think about it, and that line is, doesn't have to be super clear, <laughs> as long as you just kind of roughly keep that in mind. It helps to get started, I think. So if that Starbucks did cost the same every month, does that make it a fixed expense? Yes. If it's the same every month, it's fixed. It's fixed in the sense that it's it's the same, but it's not fixed in the sense that you can't alter it. Right? Okay. You can reduce your consumption and therefore it would be variable. So, it, so if, for example, if I go to Starbucks every day, mm -hmm. And it's the same drink every day. It's 30 days. It's dependably 30 days times whatever I spend. You still can decide not to go to Starbucks. Of course. Which then would make it variable. Okay. So maybe the best way to think about variable expenses is that they're consumption based. And okay. you have control over whether or not you consume that service or product. So then what about my other fixed expenses like rent and mortgage or Rent even. I mean, I suppose you could decide not to live somewhere, but or I don't think so. Maybe the place that you're in is too big for the cost and you realize I'm not using like half the house. That's true. But I think in general, an expense like rent or mortgage is going to be pretty much the same every month. Yeah. You might be able to make a massive lifestyle change to yeah. move that, but once you make that change, it's still going to be a fixed expense at the new rate. So I think that's a good point is don't be afraid of change. Change yep. can actually be good for in your favor. Especially if you're if you find that you're living outside your means, which this exercise will help uncover. Yes. Um, if that's the case, you know, it's then you can go back and revisit even the fixed expenses. How can we make this fixed expense less? Mm -hmm. And it might not be you know, on a per monthly basis, because that would make it variable. But mm -hmm. rent, for example, maybe we could move to a less expensive, smaller house. Mm -hmm. And now this fixed expense just becomes a smaller fixed number. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the way we usually recommend, and the, I've seen you do this recently with people, when you're getting started is to just look at, like pull up your bank statement. Mm -hmm. And for all of your accounts, across all of your accounts, so investment accounts, credit card accounts, checking savings accounts, every account that you have with yeah. any banking or, or monetary institution, get the history for the last three months. Mm -hmm. Three months is about the right amount of time because there's yeah. quarterly payments that on, sometimes only happen once every three months. Yeah, exactly. And if you do a little bit more than that, it could help, but you don't want to do a lot more because it's just going to be overwhelming to get exactly. started. That's what I find. Any more than that is going to be probably overwhelming and you get an good enough picture in three months to be yeah. able to do this exercise very effectively. Yeah. Uh, it may not be perfect, 
but you know that's what tracking ongoing is all about you can you'll get it worked out but to get started like don't be afraid of getting started because it feels just overwhelming yes you um, put it in chunks that's what these categories yeah. allow you to do is to chunk things and even just setting up the budget put it in chunks so what we do is again that last 3 months just start looking at all the things and then start in your mind figuring out oh what are some categories and mm-hmm. You don't have to start completely from scratch because believe it or not, people before you have budgeted and, and there's a set of common categories that you can kind of start with to think about what are, what are some categories that other people use because not because you should copy what everybody else is doing, but because it's already been thought about. Yeah. It it gives you a base to start with. Exactly. Then you can start to personalize it. Exactly. So what are some categories that make sense to like common categories that people should maybe consider? And again, these are just ideas to get started with. Well, the overall reason to even budget in the first place is to be able to have savings. So I think that's a great area to make sure you're going to cover to have a category for savings. And you could have different types of savings categories. You could have short term and long term savings, ones for your emergency preparedness, uh, something for a trip. Those would be in your short term. But if you look at your long term, that would be for your retirement. Um, it's not your long term. I don't know. Maybe you're saving for a while for a house or something like that. Yep. Exactly. Um, Debt repayment would be a definite savings for. I would say, yeah, right after savings, um, debt repayment. Yeah. That's the, and sometimes you even want to reverse those. Yeah. Some, like sometimes debt repayment is the priority. And in fact, I just watched a video from Warren Buffett, yeah. billion, you know, world billionaire. Um, saying, uh, talking about people living off credit card debt. Somebody just asked him, you know, I came into this large amount of money. What should I do with it? Where, where should I invest it? And he said, first question he asked was, do you have any debts? She's like, well, I have this credit card debt. And it was a pretty significant amount. And he, he said, well, what's the interest rate on that? And she's like, well, 18%. And Warren Buffett, right? He, he's the, the one of the world's best investors. He's like, I could never get 18% on an investment ever. You should pay that down immediately. Get rid of it. Cause it's, exactly. yeah. Otherwise, uh, interest is a lot I'm going to lend you some money. And if you pay me 18% interest on it, that's the better. And that's a better investment I could get anywhere in the market. So yeah. you're throwing away money on credit cards. If you have a balance there, Yeah. get that paid down. Uh, anyway, different story. It's a lot freeing, though, when you don't have debt. It feels so much better. It does. So back to categories. Sorry for a little sidetrack there, but that was an interesting uh, comparison. So some of the other categories you might want to consider are just like personal spending. Yeah, so um, that's your housing, your clothes. I, I actually food. recommend breaking that down a little bit more. So I would have one for housing, household items like rent. Yep. electricity, water, maintenance, you know, whatever it is that is related to the house. Yeah. Probably you have a phone bill uh, for your cell phone. You probably have auto expenses. So that would be another category. Yeah. That's going to be your gas, your maintenance, your car payments. If you have any insurance, mm-hmm. maybe you have other insurance payments too, like life insurance, house insurance um, or rent insurance, mortgage insurance, whatever. Yep. It could be various different men. If you have, some specialty needs. You may have other insurance there. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, you know, as you consider all these different types of common categories, looking through your transactions, just group them into what, you know, what makes sense. Yeah. You're going to find some transactions left that don't have a category. And then you just either create a new category for them as you visually look at them and figure out, oh, this, you know, I've got like, a personal training category because I have an app for that and I have gym membership and I have shoe maintenance. I don't know. Yeah. Just (laughs) periodic things that you get to be able to do your exercises. It it could be anything. So you you just kind of have to figure out for you what makes sense based on your spending. Even after that exercise though, you may have some transactions that don't fit into a common category, like one-off things, weird things, and maybe an emergency came up or, something that just didn't fit into a category, which we typically call the dreaded miscellaneous category. It's just a bucket. It's a, sl- it's a slush bucket. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's like petty cash. Um, but be very careful with this category because it can grow. Yeah. It can get out of control very quickly. Yeah. Uh, in fact, one of our uh, blog posts about what is this miscellaneous category? It's actually one of our number one visited Sweet. blog posts on the internet. I, I never even intended for it to be that interesting, but um, you, you just got to be careful about this because that, that can become a, literally a slush fund and you can hide expenses in there. That could be a black hole. Yeah. It, it's not a great idea. If you can, don't have a miscellaneous, but I think it's probably not possible. But if you do find that miscellaneous budget that's growing, what you can do is then evaluate it periodically and say, what kind of things are falling in there? How can I categorize them? And can I eliminate any of these expenses? Are they just like your allures when you get in there that you've just been stuck into the trap that you've been sucked in again? Precisely. And once you've slotted everything into these categories, including the dreaded miscellaneous or cash category, mm -hmm. um, then you can, again, based on your last three months of spending, you'll know exactly what the budget should be for these categories. And yes. so you can start using that budget um, as a, a kind of a starting point. Yes. And as you mentioned, you can figure out, are there ways I can eliminate some things? Because you will naturally notice as you go through this exercise, holy, I'm spending so much on fast food, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So you may... You may want to chastise yourself a little bit and set a plan in place to not eat out so much. And one of the ways you can do that is just allocate less money to the category than you have been spending in the past. Yeah. And similar to how an envelope budget works, you just need to track this as you go through the month. In fact, you, what you really should do is plan ahead, plan your month spending before it actually happens. Yes. Uh, which is that's the power of calendar budget. But even if you're not using calendar budget, just plan ahead. And if your plan says that you're going to go over budget, then remove something from the plan. If it's a variable expense, this should be easy. If it's a fixed expense, you know, obviously there's not much you can do there uh, without making a huge lifestyle changes. But these category budgets are going to allow you to put a throttle on your life yeah. and make sure that you're Spending within your means. That's what planning is all about. You're trying to accomplish a goal. You want to be able to, that's why you're budgeting. It's because you want to be debt free. You want to be able to purchase a car or a house or something like that. So your categories are going to help you to be able to prioritize what's important to you, to go along with your values, your, what motivates you. So that's what, what, what is going to help you to stick to your budget and make these categories meaningful to you. So check those out and use those fixed expenses to get you started and evaluate, like Eric was saying, that you go back and you review periodically to eliminate the things that really aren't helping you to stick to and accomplish your goals that don't align with your values. And every now and then you think, okay, I want to improve like the new year's come along. I want to be able to make a change and having your budget will help you to make that change because you can track and see what's going to happen and look ahead and reduce any thing that is making you go over budget. And that's why it's important that you track. Like you can't just create these categories and then never revisit them again. You have to be ongoing tracking your expenses in a budget where you're, you're comparing, basically constantly comparing your actual spend with how much did you allocate for the category. And as you do that, you can make decisions about the rest of the week, the rest of the month, mm -hmm. the rest of the day, if that's how you're living your life, um, to make sure that you fall within your plan. Because you set the plan for a reason. Like, don't break the plan because you're, you've are you got that craving, I got a hankering for the next Starbucks drink, right? Yes. You can control, be in control, Say no to yourself sometimes on things like that because you want to accomplish your goal. And it's exciting to see that goal happen. In the past, we've done that. We set a goal for ourselves. We knew that we were going to need a new vehicle. And we looked ahead with calendar budget for years to see how long it would take for us to accomplish that goal. 
And we knew that the kids were still small, that we weren't going to need a new vehicle for a few years. And we were able to scrimp and save and change our spending habits to be able to accomplish that goal sooner and walk up and pay cash for the vehicle. Yeah. That's awesome. It's an awesome feeling just to be able to pay cash for something so big like that. Yeah. It's just cool. It is. It is. So using your categories is going to help you tremendously as you're working through your budget and tracking things. And as you do that, you're going to find tremendous success. Happy budgeting. I can pay cash, I can pay check, I can pay wire transfer, I can pay gift card, I can pay credit, I can pay anything you like. I can pay cash, I can pay check, I can pay wire transfer, I can pay gift card, I can pay credit, I can pay anything you like.